present George Edwards as the Hunchback of Notre Dame. In the previous episode, we heard of the trial of Esmeralda and how the court found her guilty of witchcraft and the murder of Captain Phoebus de Chateau Père. The king's cardinal tried to persuade Esmeralda to confess, but the girl proclaimed her innocence. The cardinal pressed her for a confession, but still Esmeralda persisted in declaring that she was innocent of the crimes with which she'd been charged. Eventually, the cardinal ordered that she be taken to the torture chamber and that in two hours' time, a confession should be wrung from her. Shortly after Esmeralda was led away to the torture chamber, Quasimodo burst into the courtroom. My Lord Cardinal, my Lord Cardinal, hear me. Am I too late to speak in the cause of justice? Who is this creature? What does this mean? Quasimodo, how dare you burst in here? My master, where is Esmeralda? Let me speak to her. Is this one of the devils to whom Esmeralda says her prayer? No, my lord cardinal. This is my bell ringer at the Cathedral of Notre Dame. What can he possibly know about this case? Speak, hunchback. State why you have come here. I have come to plead for the life of Esmeralda. She is innocent, my lord cardinal. I swear that. My lord cardinal, this poor creature is accursed and knows not what he says. So vile is the witch Esmeralda that she has even cast a spell over him. He looks accursed. We cannot have the time of the court wasted by this hunchback. I go to take wine with the king. Then I will return to the torture chamber to put the gypsy girl to the question. You must hear me, my lord. There is a plot against the girl. I can tell you the whole truth. Cosimodo, the case has already been decided. And you shall be well punished for coming here. A moment, Dom Frollo. In my office as judge of this court, I must hear all witnesses. Let this man speak. But, my lord cardinal, the man is not responsible for what he says. He is under the evil spell of Esmeralda. She has probably willed him to come here. Nevertheless, I will hear him. Speak on, hunchback. My lord cardinal, for many years I have served Dom Frollo faithfully... He befriended me and took me in when I was but a waif and an outcast. It pains me to speak against him, but I must tell the truth because I love Esmeralda. What is this? Does she return your love? I know not. How could anyone love a misshapen creature such as Quasimodo? Witches have strange fancies. She is no witch. And I say that Dom Frollo deliberately plotted to bring about her downfall. He slew Captain Phoebus de Chateau Père. Cosimodo, you lie! Hunchback, I know now that you are under the evil spell of La Esmeralda. It is by her will that you have come here and told this ridiculous story. Have no fear, Dom Frollo. I could not possibly believe such an obvious lie. It is no lie. Dom Frollo loves La Esmeralda. My Lord Cardinal, the man is bewitched. I know it. I will hear no more of his story. I will not allow these foul insinuations to be made against the Archdeacon of Notre Dame. Where is Esmeralda? Do not fear, hunchback. Soon you will be free of her spell. You must hear me further, my lord cardinal. Dom Frollo, take this hunchback to the cathedral and see that he does not leave there again. It is disgraceful that revolting creatures like this should wander about and address their better. I promise it shall not occur again, my lord cardinal. Good. I will meet you in two hours' time in the torture chamber, Dom Frollo. Dom Frollo, my master, is there no mercy in your heart? I will show you that there is no mercy in my heart. You shall feel the less for this. Oh, Dom Frollo, let me see Esmeralda. Let me speak to her. You cannot torture her. That frail white body cannot be broken on the rack. Enough. Go back to the cathedral, you dog, and receive the punishment which you so richly deserve. <laughs> Two 
two hours later, after having taken wine with the king, the Lord Cardinal, accompanied by two bishops and Dom Frollo, went to the torture chamber, where Esmeralda, closely guarded, was awaiting them. At one end of the torture chamber was a large furnace, in which burned a fire that threw a red glare over the room. And around the room, there were a variety of instruments. In the center was a leather mattress, laid almost flat upon the floor, over which hung a thong with a buckle fastened to a copper ring. Thongs, pincers, broad plowshares, and other hideous instruments lay heating in the fire in the interior of the furnace. The head torturer and his two assistants stood waiting the orders of the cardinal. Well, Esmeralda, do you still persist in your denial? Yes. In that case, it will be necessary for us to question you more urgently than we have so far. Recline upon that leather mattress. No, you shall not put me to torture. Torturer, place her upon the mattress. Let me go. I am afraid. There is still time to confess your crime. I have nothing to confess. So be it. Is the physician here, Dom Frollo? The physician is here, my lord cardinal. This unfortunate girl still persists in denying the charges that are preferred against her. Now, Dom Frollo, what shall we begin with? It is usual to begin with the iron buskin, my lord cardinal. It is found most useful in making women speak. That is so. I will explain this to you, Esmeralda. This iron buskin is put over your foot. Then the screws are turned, and it crushes your foot up until such time as it doubles over. Oh. But it does not do it quickly. The buskin is very cruel and painful. So it is worked from this pulley. Put it on her foot. Oh, my Lord Cardinal, you are a man of God. Is there no mercy in your soul? I am innocent, I swear it. It is my duty to my church and to the city to obtain confessions from prisoners who have been found guilty. I ask you for the last time. Do you confess the crimes with which you are charged? I am innocent. Then how do you explain the circumstances of the evidence which has been given against you? It is all a plot. I know not how it happened. Dom Frollo can tell you. She is about to repeat the same lie, my Lord Cardinal. Esmeralda, you cannot save yourself at the expense of Dom Frollo. Even now they are fitting the buskin to your foot. If you would experience agony and pain, proceed in your denial. But if you wish us to show mercy, tell the truth and confess your guilt. My Lord Cardinal, I beg that you order my release. I will leave Paris never to return. Why am I afflicted that I should have to bear torture? I have never harmed anyone. I beg again that you show mercy. Cannot my tears soften your heart, my Lord Cardinal? You may have mercy if you confess. Must I tell you again that I am innocent? I have found the charges against you proven, and it is my duty to obtain a confession. Now we cannot waste any more time. Will you please hear me? And let me tell you that Dom Frollo is the cause of all this. He is a man who should be tortured. Dom Frollo has done his duty in coming forward and speaking against you. Is the buskin on her foot? Yes, my lord cardinal. Very well. Let us commence. Oh, oh my lord cardinal, have mercy. And the agony to my foot. Give another turn to the screw. Oh. Do you confess, prisoner? Mercy, I beg of you. Give the screw another turn. Oh, I have nothing to confess. I release my foot. The love of heaven shall mercy. Wretched woman, you are suffering for your sins. For the sins of witchcraft and murder. Confess your guilt and win freedom from pain. No. no I am innocent. Do your work, torturer. Turn the screw again. Have mercy. We are waiting for your confession. I'm screw it. Oh, for the love of God, I'm screw it. I Loosen the buskin. Oh. Well, Esmeralda, do you confess? I confess everything. I ask for mercy. Mercy, my lord. You are sure that you desire to confess? Yes, my lord. Humanity obliges me to inform you that although you confess, you have nothing to expect but death. I wish for it. How soon can I die? 
Tom Frollo, have you your writing tablets? Yes, my lord cardinal. Write her answers. Now, Esmeralda, the gypsy girl, do you confess your participation in witchcraft, sorcery, and evil practices? Yes. Do you confess that you have had commerce with the devil in the shape of the goat who had human understanding? Yes. Lastly, do you declare and confess that instigated by and with the assistance of the devil, you did on the 29th of March kill and slay Captain Phoebus de chateau Yes. I confess anything rather than face torture again. Is that written down, Dom Frollo? Yes, my lord. It is well that she cried out in time, and the prisoner herself must admit that we showed her all possible lenience. Oh. We gave her every chance to confess. Now, Esmeralda, you have confessed to all your misdeeds and to murder. Yes, whatever you please. Only put me to death. Don't. Very well. On such day as it so pleases our Lord the King, at the hour of noon, you will be drawn in a tumbrel with a rope about your neck to the great porch of Notre Dame, and there you shall do penance. Holding in your hand a wax candle of two pounds weight. And from thence you shall be taken to the plastic grave. And there hang by the neck on the gallows of the city. And may God receive your soul. Take her to the dungeon. <laughs> And so the dread sentence of death was passed on Esmeralda. The half-fainting, broken-spirited girl was led away to the dungeon. Will the sentence of death be carried out? Is Esmeralda doomed? We shall hear that in the next episode of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs>